Do you have anger? Do I have anger? Yes. No, not at all. So you never get angry? I don't have, I get angry sometimes, but I don't have anger. When you say that, that makes me think of like taking ownership of it. But if you don't have it, how can you get it? Uh, picking it up from an offense. But is this out of you? Is this out of you, right? Um, yeah, out of me. The anger is inside of you, right? Right. It it comes inside of me for a minute. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't live in me. It comes inside of me. No, it comes from where? Uh, like like here's what the, like the Bible says: be angry and sin not. Right, which means that you can have the propensity to get angry. It's, it's in the Bible. So if I if I allow myself to operate at my lower state or or operate at the fallen state, then I'll start thinking that someone did me wrong and that anger will get into me at first. And then I'll have to just translate that to what kingdom must be how kingdom wants me to respond. But it doesn't get in you, it's just that situation that brought that situation brought it, it up in you. It was already there, but the situation brought it up, right? Okay. All right. I can look at it like that. I, yeah, I can look at it like that. It's anger. But that, I, I, I believe that there are de- there are real demons that exist. Right. And I think that demons, they I know that they influence people. So, like, for instance, road rage. You could be driving down the street, and a demonic spirit Will, will 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 have an agenda against you and have you get offended over something and it comes in you. So this is I don't to say that it lives in me. I just can't, you know. And and it is hard to get me angry. Um, how did you become an angry person? Because when you were a kid, you were angry and you grew up with that anger. Where did that come from? I, I'm not an angry person, but when it comes, <laughs> I, I, when it comes. Because your question was, how did you become an angry person? I'm not an angry person. But when it does come, it's it's probably something that I felt that a, it's usually with people. So I felt that a person should have known better. I'm expecting other people what they don't really have to give me. And then I end up getting angry. You um, uh, Did you know that any man that has anger is a woman? Because anger is the nature of the woman. Okay. All right. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> and, and men who have anger and got it from their mother, she passed it on to them when they were kids because the mother imposed herself upon the children. She made them, she turned them away from the father toward her. The kids become angry. And so they become subject to the mother. And that's what made the woman their God. And because every woman you get involved with is your mama. And because you never forgave your mama, it's hard to deal with the woman you're married to because it's the same spirit. That's why in order to be born of the spirit of the father, you got to forgive the spirit of the woman, which is of the devil. Mm, okay. I teach that a little different. You know, um, when I teach men, I teach them that men who are hurt by their fathers react in two different ways, anger or fantasy. So I, I teach that anger comes from the, the absence of the male. No, emotionally. it comes from the mother and the father, even if he's in the home, if he doesn't protect the children from the mother, she will still screw them up. Okay. How would you explain when when children are raised primarily by their dads and never knew their mom, but, but end up angry? Because the father has the spirit of his mother. And so he doesn't deal with the children with perfect love, patience and all that. He deals with the children the way a woman would deal with. He became like his mother because you become like what you hate. Okay. All right. Isn't that amazing? Now, as a, as, no, it's for, from you. From, I, I'm hearing what you're saying. <laughs> I'm hearing what you're saying. Have you forgiven your mother for imposing her will on you? Um, absolutely. My mother, um, I forgave her because I, I was able at an un- a young age to see that um, people are the way they are for a reason. And yeah, she, she was brought up a specific way. Yeah, she became uh-huh. like her mother. Mm. Okay, all right. And so you went to her and forgave her for what she did to you? Um, I, I I didn't have to go to her and forgive her for anything because as a man, I took the responsibility myself. And then you know what I did? 
I saw my dad. I didn't see her. I saw my dad's absence, my father's absence. Right. So I said, yeah. So within myself, I just said, you know what? My mother did the best she can. I forgive her. I didn't, I didn't go That's to her right. and say, and why not? God said that before you enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must go and forgive. Because anyone that yeah. has anger is of the devil, because anger is of the devil, is evil, and it's of the devil. It's not of God. And so when you forgive your mother for imposing her will, turning you away from your father, God will forgive you. Don't ask for forgiveness. Forgive her, and God will forgive you, and he'll take the spirit of the devil away from you. Because the devil operates in the imagination. Right. No, I don't have anger. Neither do I have the spirit of the devil. But why not, go and, the this. <laughs> why not go and forgive her then? I, I've already forgiven her. But you didn't tell her. Okay. All right. All right. So let me ask you a question. If a person harms you and they die, and you can't tell them that you forgive them. Are you you held hostage, held hostage by that? No, no because you if you were born in your own, if you were born again of the Father, you would know that they can help themselves. And so, knowing that they can help it because you see you can help yourself, that will cause you to forgive them. But if they're alive, you should go and forgive them, and God will forgive you. He said, "Forgive, and I will forgive you." Right, right. You got to face your Absolutely. mama. All right. Uh, so what if there's no, now there's no anger towards in me, towards my mom in any shape, form, or fashion. None. So, uh, you know, and I, I really, I really would like, for, like when you re-edit this, you know, I, I really would like for it to be stated that there's no anger towards my mom at all. No, we're not going to take that out. No way. Okay. But all what right. would happen if you went and forgave her for the thing she did and you know now that she can help herself? What do you think if you went to her and said, hey, mother, I forgive you for imposing your will on me? And then have you ever asked your father why didn't he protect you from your mother? My, my father passed away. Oh, when you were young? Uh, I, no, he passed away when, when I was, before I had a chance to establish a relationship with him. I was older, but I didn't have a chance to, to establish a relationship with him when he passed away. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, you teach a course on biblical manhood. What is that? Biblical manhood is establishing a definition of what it really means to be a man in this day and age. And what does it mean to be a man? What is a man? Okay, well, by the definition that I give based off of biblically is this. A, a biblical man is a man who, through the maturation process, number one, rejects passivity, number two, accepts responsibility, number three, leads courageously, and number four, invests eternally. It's everything that Adam didn't do, but but Jesus did do. Oh, okay. 